First, let me tell you guys honestly, and I said this in the spring, it, it truly is great to see y'all's faces. Um, glad it's in this manner after a win, a much needed. But uh, look, I appreciate all the work you guys do. I, to be honest, I haven't read a whole lot of uh, media lately, and rightfully so. I hope you don't blame me. So it's one less uh, reader. But, uh, it, it, but again, great to see you guys' faces. I truly, wholly, hardly mean that. And I know you guys are always looking out for the best interest of our program. And I'm glad it's in this manner that I get to see you guys. So thank you for everything you all do. Uh, look, a much needed win. Let's call it what it is. I'm not going to hide from that. Uh, the kids have faced adversity uh, these last three weeks. And it seemed to be the same narrative after every game. The same song and dance, the same answers from me. The This is what we need to do. We were close, but we didn't finish. Or we shot ourselves in the foot. Or we didn't do this and we didn't do that. And, you know, when you preach that same narrative to your young men, and you're telling them, hey, this is what we got to do and this is what we're doing wrong. Well, it's hard for an 18 to 22 year old to stick with that type of mindset and focus saying, OK, but you're going to ask us to come back and work harder. You're going to ask us to keep pushing. You're going to ask us to grind more, to love more and to believe more. Darn straight. And that's what I'm so proud about these guys is we didn't see any guys over the last three weeks into the portal. We didn't see any guys tap out. We didn't see any guys quit. In fact, if anything, they grew closer during these moments of adversity. And I'm not sitting here to stand on a uh, soapbox, but man, those are le life lessons that they learned is there's adversity that's going to hit them every single day. Uh, and they're all going to see it and they've seen it, but to be able to come together as a program, as a brotherhood, uh, to find a way and to see it come to fruition, right, their hard work tonight. And it's just one example. And we're going to guess what? We're going to have to hurry up and repeat it and do it again and do it again. But what this showed me, this is a, you know, we talked about last year, the guys having perseverance and, and a little bit of grit. But I think we're seeing that with this group and in a different manner, um, but just proud because they believe. And uh, the results of the last three weeks were exactly what we wanted to know, but the guys showed up tonight uh, and just so proud of the way they continue to believe, continue to work, uh, and they're excited for the next challenge. Kevin and Frank. Brian, um, I guess first off, just what's, what's the update on, on Seth? You saw that he left the game. How is he doing at this point? Yeah, it was precautionary. At that point, uh, we knew we were going to run the football. Uh, you know, same, same with Calvin, uh, same with some of our other guys. We knew that we needed to run the football in order to do it. I wasn't going to sit there and, and drop back pass. Um, so it was more precautionary. And uh, right now, that's, you know, I can, that's all I have. No, it's a day to day. You know, you guys did both see them on the sidelines. Um, so they were, you know, President Cowboy, they traveled with us. Uh, they were locked in, dialed in meetings, and again, it's like a lot of things. I think those short weeks, um, you know, I know Thomas had been banged up before, but just those short weeks were hard to get guys back. Um, and we are a banged up football team, but that's no excuses. Um, we, you know, I know uh, it's pretty well known that we've played. Uh, I, after this game, I'm not sure what it was, but 24 um, redshirt freshmen, true freshmen. Um, and so a lot of these young guys are stepping up. you got guys like Calvin that battle his tail off. Um, and, and Calvin hadn't been 100% in a couple of weeks, but man, the young man loves the program, loves his brothers, and would do anything. If I told Calvin, hey, go out there and run the ball, he said, yes, sir, let's go. Two hands on the rock and let's find a way. Um, but that's where we're at. We need to hurry up and get healthy, though, because uh, we know that uh, we got a tough opponent down in Orlando coming up. Frank and Jim, maybe um, in that first drive, five and six third down, and that fourth down, but then after that, the defense. Yeah, look, that first drive, you know, I liked our offensive first drive. You know, that was the first time in a while you guys know that I don't really select to receive the football. So I was, okay, that was a, maybe a, finally a smart decision on my behalf for once. Um, and then they go down and, and put that together that I don't even know how long that drive lasted. Anybody, it was, how many plays? 50, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Almost 12 minutes. Almost 12 minutes. 21 play, yeah, so a lifetime, right? And so you talk about, and we've tried to talk to our offense about, hey, you got to be ready for this. And um, the biggest thing with that is once you feel like you're able to stop, but, man, the way they respond to our defense was absolutely phenomenal. They didn't sit there, like, on the sidelines, like, man, it's not working this year. It's not. They didn't throw their hands up. There was no finger point. They just said, okay. They, I don't know if you guys saw the sideline. This is the best I've seen our sideline since I've been here. Guys were bright-eyed. They were, you know, dialed in. And I, I just got done leaving the locker room. I told our guys, this is the first time I've been in our locker room that went a single cell phone out during halftime. Nobody had their earphones in. Even guys that didn't even travel were sitting there like this, bright-eyed, like, what do we need? What, what, what's it going to take? And I just think that focus, and it's something I'm going to constantly have to preach as long as I'm the head coach here, focus of these young men, um, was there and dialed in. And I'm not saying it wasn't there in the past, but – um, 
the, 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 the defense had the resolve to say, okay, it may not have worked right now, but we're so close. We're so close. Let's find a way to get those stops, and they didn't. Just proud of their efforts. And then fumble. No fumble today. Uh, I guess how relieved are you to see that nobody dropped the ball? Well, uh, no, because we did have the, the interception. It could have been a pick six, and uh, obviously um, that's something we got to continue to get cleaned up. And um, so, you know, look, I'm just uh, – no, obviously, yeah, glad we didn't fumble. But we, one of these days, hopefully next Friday, we're going to play a, a turnover-free game um, and then hopefully maybe find a way to get some uh, turnovers and bring out that turnover belt, which you guys had not seen in a while in defense. Terry Clayton and Mark, coach, you said you, you spent time on the same answer, you know, do your job, do your job, do your job. But well, this team played different today. Did you do anything coaching-wise for them to play their role better, or they just came out and executed the way you want to execute? Well, look, and – it would be foolish of us if we didn't change a little bit of things that we need to do schematically. Um, but I tell these guys all the time, and the three gentlemen sitting to my right right now will tell you, the message really doesn't need to change yet. Yeah, it's not always the same song and dance week in and week out, but the, the message of what it's going to take, right, pouring in, loving, being all in, without sounding corny, there's no reason for that monster to change. They understand their attitude, their approach, their work ethic, all that stuff was there. And it, it just went our way. We executed better uh, tonight than we have. And um, I think they know that. Like I told you guys in the press conference on Monday, I'd, my concerns would be had we gotten blown out in the previous three games. My concerns would be if there's finger pointing, hate, blame of coaches, blame of each other, blame of the offense, blame of the defense. Blame of, and there was none of that. And like I said, which is so unique in these moments of adversity, our team actually grew closer together. And that, to me, speaks volumes. And that's going to pay huge dividends not only for tomorrow, for next Friday, for the rest of their lives. And for them to see, hey, this is adversity. This is what it looks like. We were sitting thick in it. I was sick to myself. I haven't slept in three weeks. And, and But these young men, they freaking believe. They fight, and I'm just so darn proud. And so it wasn't a, a new change. We didn't come out here and say, this is what we, we were able to execute, and they continued to believe. And I talked to them. I, I kind of use a box analogy. We got our asses knocked down. But we're getting off the mat, and we had to get off the mat the day after the freaking last game. And now we're back against the ropes, and all week we got to keep swinging, swinging, swinging. And they proved it, you know. And I was just, like I said, the fact that it came to fruition, uh, it, it allowed them, hey, they continue to believe. And, and these young men are, are going to be set for a long time in life because they've seen a little bit of adversity uh, in the last three weeks. And, look, I don't want to see any more for a while, uh, for a long-ass time, to be honest, part of my language. But uh, just, again, like I said, the, the, these young men, their belief – and the way they, they believe in this program and care about each other, it's been phenomenal. It's been fun to watch. Mark, uh, notice uh, in the previous game, uh, I missed it previously, I noticed Kevin John and Jordan Davis on the sidelines this week. What was the impetus for that change? How do you think it helped? Yeah, so look, we've got uh, some very intelligent student athletes on our team that kind of said, hey, kind of maybe even suggested it. And Coach Johns loves to look in guys' eyes. And he's, done a, he's a phenomenal leader. Um, sometimes I can't always be there with the offense, but we, we've had some young men that said, man, we want you down there. And our players uh, love Coach Johns and trust him. And I think, you know, having a young quarterback and then, you know, we got vets like Calvin Austin and, and Sean Dykes, but it's good for him, kind of a calming voice, and he can kind of prepare them. Okay, hey, great job, or here's what we messed up on. It's hard when you got sometimes maybe the O-line coach, the receiver coach, um, and then upstairs you got the quarterback coach. It's, yeah, you can go talk on the, but it's a different day and age, right? We don't have the in the NFL like the iPad. So uh, he came down the field and did a phenomenal job, calling a great game. And to go forward, I'm not sure, you know, if that's something we'll continue to do. But uh, coach, how big was it to get to Ron Ivory and Eddie Lewis and more involved in the offense to take some of the stress off the gallery? Yeah, look, I, I've said it week in week out. Every time you know, there'll be a week, you guys will say, "Man, how come?" Uh, Sean Dykes didn't get many targets, you know, and I think a lot of it's going to be we're never going to let the defense dictate what we want. Uh, we've seen some rolled coverage to Calvin. We've seen some different things that, that they're trying to do, which is great. I can promise you this. Calvin will take zero catches for zero yards and a win any day of the week. That's the type of young man he is. Obviously, I, I loved him on the reverse, um, you know, we freaking wheels getting down the field and all that stuff. But um, it was great to see. We're going to need guys to step up. Javon Ivory, a young wide receiver. Eddie Lewis, a name who really didn't play much. Uh, the first few weeks, and he's being able to fill in uh, for some guys. And that's part of the reason why we're seeing so many different faces. That, you know, the rotation, you guys will say, Ryan, why are we still rotating backs? Well, I think they're all capable, and so that's part of it. But it's good to see more guys step up. Significantly better. I think we had, you know, 
just off the top of my head, three true missed tackles. Obviously, it's hard to tell in that dive stuff. I'm looking in there and thinking, you know, um, but I was pleased with it. I thought the guys, they swarmed to the football. Um, yeah, the special teams tackling was outstanding. Uh, obviously pissed about the, the, the fake they got us, and that put that on me. I've got to do a better job of make sure we execute at a better level on that one. But I was pleased. The defense showed up. Uh, and it was assignment sound, and that's so hard to do against a triple option. I mean, literally, I'd go up and down the defensive sideline, and, and John Tate probably got tired of hearing me saying, trust your eyes, do your job, just do your job, just trust your assignment, trust your training, at nauseum. And they freaking just lined up and did it, and lined up and did it, and that's the hardest part, and they were able to tackle well. Ryan, obviously now, uh, in the past UCF, obviously, with the Indelets, how been kind to the program recently, but just kind of for this game, do you feel like it's kind of the right message that you guys not only look efficient, but look more clean with the ball and not even go prepare for a team that after last year I was going to still be in trouble down in Florida. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I'm, I don't ever, I say I don't ever, because there's so many of these guys that have never been down to Orlando and, and experienced what some of us have uh, down there. Um, and it, yeah, it hadn't been great, but like I said, every team is different. Um, we got a lot of new players, you know, um, out there that are playing football. But it, I think what it does is our guys had confidence. I don't think they ever lost that confidence the last three weeks because they believed and they fought. But what it does is just lets them know, hey, all it is is a reassurance. And it's a reassurance that, man, what we're doing is right. What the head coach is preaching is right. The way we work, the lo that's what's so – it's going to make, hey, showing up to work tomorrow, What cool, whatever it takes, coach, whatever. And um, we know it's going to be a tough opponent. Where It's a Friday night game again. Um, and we played more night games, you know, this year and midweek games than I could ever fathom. Um, but the, the guys will be ready for it. I know they'll be excited. They know the challenges. Um, the vets, the, the the vets will be hungry. They've been down there before, just like they always are. And we know it's a great environment. That well, the, the darn bounce house, those aluminum bleachers. I'll probably have a headache all week by hearing the uh, oh, that song. I have no uh, uh, music and tangibles to be able to replicate that. But we know it's going to be loud and. Uh, it's given us troubles, and we're excited to go down there and, and figure out a way to find a way to win a game. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good night. Again, great seeing you guys.